know, it's just it's everything that we talked about before the game, and, and, and here we are. It's definitely still out there for anybody to take. And, of course, we, we would be remiss if we didn't mention the kicking of Sammy Hayworth from Seabreeze High School. I think he has really been the thing that's kept the Bears at bay. He has turned the field around two or three times here tonight. Uh, had one kickoff into the end zone. So we are getting ready to tee it up here to start the second half. Sand Crabs will receive. Back deep to receive for Seabreeze will be Javier Sylvester, Latavia Sanders. And tough to get a read on the kicker for Marcus Trail because it'll be the first time we've seen their kicker tonight. And I don't believe we've seen Javier in the backfield yet for the for the, for the crab. Summers has gotten most of those reps. He's Done a good job. Them, and, but we, well, Sylvester is the one who scored the touchdown. Right. He was on the speed sweep. But we don't see him. We, we've not, not seen much. him as the as the feature back, which we we saw a couple of weeks ago, and he did a nice job. I think he might be more suited to do what they're doing with him tonight. Second half is underway. That's fielded by Sanders. Coming near side, and he's going to be tripped up at about the 22-yard line. First and 10, Seabreeze from their 22-yard line, 11.53, remaining in the third quarter. Great job by David Kaplan there. He ran that down from the middle of the field. Looked like they might have a little something early on. It's hard to get that ball all the way from one side outside the numbers to the other side of the field. I, I was thinking the same thing. I like those guys to go straight up the middle with it. No. Number six for the Crabs last year might have been able to get that done, Charles Nelson. Muller comes out. He and Sylvester set up shop in the backfield for Seabreeze. Sylvester on the carry. Starts out. Mm. Starts out as if it's going to be a big run. Four or five Bears there in on the stop. Well, we called for him. Leo and Marshall. We called for him and we got him, Bill. And, uh, you know, one of the things we noticed about him and any small back, you know, you're not going to get a lot of yards after contact because um, he's not the biggest fellow, but he runs it hard. But if he gets to that second level, I'm going to put my money on, on uh, Javier. With the, yes, against this group because I'm sure that he runs as well as anybody that's wearing white tonight. Muller's pass. Great catch. Caught by Rashad Floyd. First down. I just think that they've got to get the ball in his hands a little bit more. I would agree with you. Just seems that he's had a, and it's a combination of the quarterback play as well, but it seems that he's had a, 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 a tough transition going from being, you know, Robin to being Batman. You know, last year he didn't have to carry the load. This year he's got to be the guy. Muller looking deep down the field, has a wide open oh. receiver, caught. Great throw and catch, but I'll tell you what, Jordan Helm, collision. Jordan Helm, initial, with the initial stop. Anthony Blake on the reception for the St. Crabs. He felt it too, it was a great catch and great throw, but he, he, got, a, he got a pretty good blow at the end of that. Seabreeze off to a great start here in the second half. First and 10 Crabs from the Bartram Trail, 43. Muller, throwing the screen, that's Sylvester. He's got a blocker out in front of him. He's gonna take a few bears with him. And he will pick up the first down. It'll be first and 10, Seabreeze at the Bartram Trail, 30 yard line. Coach, it looks like they inverted that, that little tunnel screen and went the other way with it, huh? It was a little different design yeah. than I'm used to seeing there, the back coming out of the backfield, I guess, catching that thing. Sylvester will stay in the backfield with Muller. Three receivers near side. Speed option. Nope. Muller looks to his left, pass. Lateral. Yep, yep, yep. Pass is intended for number 20, Brett Cormier. Cormier. Coincidentally, is one of about five call-ups. The uh, JV game Wednesday against Mainland High School was called off due to inclement weather, which I don't understand. <laughs> and uh, Cormier is a call-up. Sylvester doing. Yeah, this is not going to be trying good. Trying to do his best, Houdini. That's Ball. not going to happen. Well, I 
I'll tell you what. It's hard to tell where his forward progress might have ended there. I think it's going to be pretty much where this thing stopped, his little second effort. If he goes down there, I think that he's okay. But when he tried to squirm out, they, this is a tough third down situation here. Now, Sylvester is a converted defensive back. He's only a junior. Obviously, he didn't get many carries last year. At some point, somebody's got to teach him enough's enough. Go down so you don't lose too many right, yards. Right. You just can't afford this, this kind of loss here. We're third and, as my cousin would say, a bus ride. Correct. From the Bartram Trail, 44-yard line. Muller looking downfield. He's under pressure. He'll elude the pressure. Roll to his right. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you what, he is taking it. we got another crab, 64 is down on the field. We've got the quarterback taking a big blow here. Kevin Hosick shaking up on the play for the Sand Crabs. And, and to be quite honest with you guys, they were small going in, yeah. not just in size, but in numbers. Thin and thin, yeah, they, they don't need to lose anybody up front. In fact, they're playing without their most experienced offensive lineman. Uh, looking, looking, looking. Uh, who has he has an act, he's actually out with a concussion. And he's not on the roster. He must have been replaced by another another player, but I don't see his name on here. So down in numbers and in size. And I think we need to hope that Kevin Hosek is okay and come back. I, I think I, I I just from the looks of it he is pretty ginger on an ankle or on a knee here. He's so you guys left knee wrapped up, uh -huh. and then that's the one he's sort of favored at this point. The name I was looking for was Dan Sutton. Dan Sutton's the offensive lineman for Series Out with the Not concussion. Out with the concussion. In fact, he's walking in the white jersey with Coach Hillman uh, just off to our right. So it'll be fourth down for the Sand Crabs. Sammy Hayworth in to do what he does best. A.J. Bolden back deep to receive for the Bears. He'll be standing at his 10-yard line. Again, an attempted coffin corner kick. Touched somebody. It sure did. The receiver should recover it. They don't look case. too interested in doing it, so. Must have looked a lot different to them down on the field than it did to us because it looked like something that might need to be, you know, chased after pretty it quick. sure did. Ball is down by R.J. Stokes. Bartram Trail will have their first possession of the second half from their 19-yard line. Seven to nothing, your score. Seabreeze leading Bartram Trail. 8:45 to go in the third quarter. Billy Gahagan. Steve Allen, Rocky Yoke. I'm glad to be back. Glad to be anywhere. <laughs> Gatewood back under center for the Bears. My uh -oh. correction, that's uh -oh. Jordan Smith. Coleman on the carry. Big yards for the Bears. First and ten for the Bears after a big carry from their 39-yard line. Hey, Daryl's got back to a little bit of double wing here, double slot. You know, we're going to get option out of this. Okay. Hand off once again to Coleman. It's interesting as, as we as coaches, we all, we, all, we all evolve, or the good ones evolve, but you still have what your, your root basic, you know. What you cut your teeth on. That's, that's right. right. That's right. And you just kind of try to find new ways to do some of the same things. And it looks like that's what Bartram Trail's got going here. Oh, they're going to get another nine. call here. Yep. That's not going to make your cousin very happy. I would look for a substitution in the defensive line. Uh, Coach Kramer is talking to one of his D linemen about something. Yes, he is. He's having a serious conversation. Five yards on that penalty. I don't think he's asking him what happened in second period today, Coach. No. From the looks of that. Second to five, Bartram Trail. Mm -hmm. 
Magden in motion. Smith's going to keep the ball. You know they've got a good they've got a good call on right there defensively. Yes, they do. And they the do. kid just makes a play. You know, gives him a little fake on it. I mean, he can't. Yep. The ball carrier's too far gone to be involved right. as a pitch man. And the pitch is somebody in the secondary's got their eyes on the pitch. I so. believe so. Chase Hamilton on the stop for the Sand Crabs. We will have a measurement. It's one of those on deals. Field. In, uh, in option football, you know, you got those. You're going to have to get, like you said, help out of the secondary. Those corners start getting their eyes back in the backfield, and then you, you're getting some of those stop and go opportunities. You know, you're you're playing close. You're, you know, I always I always hated having our secondary guys being real involved with backfield action um, because their first job is to take care of this back here, and uh, you can get formationed into some of those situations. Oh, you sure can. And, uh, you know, when we played option teams, lots of times we practiced without the ball. Just Absolutely. Just, just so that you yeah. didn't have kids watch because your scout team can't execute like the your opponent's going to. So if you take the ball out of it, you can at least see if people have the right assignment. When I was a young coach, I had an old coach tell me, Coach, that um, you always need to be defensively. You always need to be triple solid. You always need to be triple solid. If you're triple yeah. solid, you got a chance. That's when, when growing up in Oklahoma and watching the wishbone teams play, or watching Oklahoma run the wishbone anyway. <laughs> that was, when anybody came and said, "I want to do this on defense," I would always say, "Well, how are we going to defend the option? If you, yep. if we're solid there, then I'm 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 all for it." Third down and that much for the Bears from their 49-yard line. Magnin in motion. Seabree's not sure what they want to do right there. Coleman. <clears throat> Second effort. So they have gotten third effort. Definitely. Wow. Down wow. After about wow. three or four Good efforts. run. I lost the ball I there did in that too. pile. I didn't think he made it. And then he popped out and squirmed ahead and made the first down. What a tough run. It actually looked like they were almost scrambling for the ball. It, it, it had that look to it from up here. We're, we're a ways away from the action. Jordan Smith and the Bears, first and ten from the 50-yard line. Seabree showing blitz. Mm. Smith keeps the ball. Mm. Yeah, yeah, lost to live. Yep. Two yards, three seconds, and high school football, if your helmet comes off, do you have to leave for a play? Yes, so. yes you do. Hunter Hartsfield is going to take uh, one play. I think the Press. referee should have to leave the field if they make a bad call for a play. There may not be any officials left on the field. <laughs> I set them up, you knock them down. Second and eight, Magden goes in motion across the field this He's time. He's going to run it. Oh, that's Jordan a good Hunter piece Frederick. of work. If he tries to bounce that right there, Coach, it ends with a three-yard game, but he just kept getting back to the goal post, and I tell you. Stick your foot in the ground and go, yep. in this case, west, I would say, yep. or east. But uh, Taylor Oliver used to coach our running backs at FPC, Coach, to, to get your foot in the ground and go to the goal post. Hartsfield checks back in for the Bears after his break. Third and a yard to go. Again, Seabreeze showing blitz. And timeout. Coach Sutherland wanted that play run. He didn't want he didn't want that timeout. He wanted he had something he wanted run there and they didn't quite get the communique on that. Seven or nothing your score. Seabreeze leading Bartram Trail. 538 to go in the third quarter. It seems that this quarter has gone a lot quicker than that whole first half did. Bartram Trail calling timeout. Coach Sutherland seeing something that he doesn't like. It looks like we'll get the water break in right with it, so that's a good thing. One of those uh, wasted timeouts, maybe? It's, it's, like, it's like calling a timeout just before the two-minute warning. Well, I don't think he wanted to call it. I think they just had a communication breakdown. He, I, I, he may have wanted them to go to the draw them off sides play and not to to spend so much time waiting on a play and maybe the quarterback thought that he wanted to call another play. I just think it was a communication breakdown because he didn't look happy um, with having to use the timeout. It'll be third down and one for the Bears. Their first possession of the second half. Smith 
Smith hands the ball off to Coleman, their workhorse. Coach, I'm liking what I'm seeing out of him. I heard he was their best player before the game started, and I believe that's true. They're coming quick. And they're going to take the water break. Officials timeout for a water break. We'll take one as well. 7 0 Seabreeze leading Bartram Trail. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium. Larry Kelly back Field, Billy slot. Gahagan, Steve Allen, Rocky Yoko. First and ten for the oh, Bears. Oh, they got a little reverse on it. Yep, great call. Matt Magnum on the carry for the Bears. He'll have at least eight or nine yards. I like that play. Oh. Absolutely. About 60 years old, maybe. 70, whatever. Oh. It is still effective, just out of a little different set, a little different, a little different window dressing on it. Pick up a bait on the play. It'll be second down and two for the Bears. Oh. Keep it the ball near side. Penalty flag on the play. It's going to be holding against the Bears, bringing it back. Yeah, I believe we're going to get 88 there. Dawson Spezzali, Spezzali, he's off down the edge, and he just got, when the quarterback scrambles, you know, he's just trying to hang on. Second down and 12 for the Bears now. Each time Bartram's been in Seabreeze territory, they've kind of found a way to give the ball away, and they need to find a way to go ahead and convert this into some points. Maybe put a little pressure on the Seabreeze offense. Jordan Smith now back in at quarterback. Smith under pressure. He's hit hard, but he gets the ball off. The pass is caught by number 15, Connor Roberts. Good call. Middle screen. Mm-hmm. That was Rashad Floyd applying the pressure for St. The edge blitz has been good to see Reeves a number of times tonight. Has Rashad played a lot of defense for the St. Crabs this has, year? Played a lot has both ways. Some both ways for these guys. Outside linebacker. Smith, empty backfield. Oh. It's going to be that out again to the number two yeah, receiver was, to the boundary, and, and he think, was going to be there. I think Coach Beach realized what was happening before it happened, and he wanted to get a timeout. Timeout called by Seabreeze High School. 4-14 to go in the third quarter. 7 to nothing. you score. Seabreeze leading Bartram Trail. Coach Allen, you alluded to this earlier, or a few minutes ago at least, that Barton Trail has seen this side of the 50. They've seen themselves deep in the Seabreeze territory, but they've come up empty-handed both times. Yeah, and even though it's only a one-score game, it's you know been so tough for anybody to score. It's really not putting any pressure on Seabreeze. They don't. I don't think they feel urgency because Barton has not proven that they can get the ball down here and convert it and finish a drive, and so. Um, you know, I think Coach Beach realizes what a big third down this is, and they've let them squirm out of a couple of these, and they're going to try to take care of this third down and get their defense off the field. Change in formation, going back to a three-by-one set mm -hmm. here. Jordan Smith will stay as quarterback. 
for the Bears. Third and eight. Smith drops back, throws the ball. Tries to get the ball over a defender for the CBU St. Crab where he's locked down and bring a fourth down. As much as I like the reverse call, I like that one that, that little. Seabreeze goes all over that. It, it looked like it never had a chance. That was Braden Buswell on the bat down for the Sand Crabs. Punting situation for the Bears. See which way this bounces. It's going to take oh. a bear bounce. Oh, excellent. It's going to turn out real well. It'll be down by the Bears inside the 10 at the seven yard line. It'll be Seabreeze first and 10 with just under four minutes to go in the third quarter. Both teams trading punts their first series. I believe it's the best game that we've had that we've had to broadcast, Bill. It has been the most evenly matched game. Correct, correct. <laughs> you know, I would agree with that two terminology. Of, two of our games have ended in the uh, running clock. We've been home by now <laughs> right. in some of our games. Muller and Summers in the backfield. Three receivers near side. Muller mm. keeping the ball and met abruptly at the line of scrimmage. I just think that that takes it, your, your quarterback taking those hits. It, it takes its toll throwing the ball. It, it, it takes away from his confidence getting off the line of scrimmage. Well, especially it, since he's been shaken up already. A absolutely. Times absolutely. And you're going to be shaken up the more times you have that brown thing in your hand running with it. Reminds me of the little giants. Blow the whistle. Blow the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. Second and ten <laughs> for the Sand Crabs deep in their own territory. Sylvester is back into the back, back into the game in the backfield with Muller. Wow. The Bears doing That's the, the second time that that shift has, has caused problems for Seabreeze. You just hate him. You just hate him. Certainly do. And in this area of the field, you know, now they're they're kind of backed up into this this area where you're just a little bit limited. Second down and about 13. Muller hands the ball off. Nothing there. Investor. And in, shockingly, again, on the stop is Nick Martin. He's been very busy. The game seems as if it's just taken on a major lull all of a sudden. I feel the same way. I, I feel like every time there starts to be a flow of the game, there's a penalty called. There's something that seems to slow things down. This could be safety territory Absolutely, here. Absolutely, Coach. You're always worried about that when you're the guy calling these plays. Summer's on the carry. Ooh, He's going to be met. Buddy, let me tell you something. This is this is a spot deal right here. They're going to spot him at the two, it looks like. The Bears are all sitting on safety, but he got out to about the one or two here. So we're going to have to punt with a short, shorter snap. The punter won't be able to get the full. 13 yards deep. We'll see if we get pressure here. I was going to say, do you, do you come after or is it still too early? I think you probably just semi-pressure. I don't think you go for an all-out block, maybe hoping for a little bit of a bad punt here. He'll, he'll earn his MVP status here. Hayworth into punt. Oh, they, they got, got it. it. Walked. And it's going to be a safety. After the safety anyway, they're going to get the ball here. Coach, this is a huge play in special teams. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The inability to run the ball and the penalty, you know, and the penalty just, just hurt them, just put them in a spot right there where, you know, they're, they're setting themselves up for that to be a potential play. And, and give credit to Bartram Trail. They, they executed the block. They got the pressure, and they, they got it done. 
That's why we're up here, Coach. That's we, right. We, you and I were all set to take the field position. That's and right. Take the I, ball and go I, work. Don't rough the punter. No, sir. I've been yelling, but uh, and here we go on the replay. They just come hard off their left, and just a great job going to the foot one hand. But I, but I went after it. You so did. I, so I'm yeah. up. I'm up two nothing. You get the pay actually, raise this week. Actually, on you you're, one, you're one for three because <laughs> John was right on the first two. I we, didn't challenge you know the this. second one. I merely said if we. Oh, Nobody okay. wanted to challenge. Me. You didn't need a challenge. I, I, we already had a call. <laughs> that was Nick's right away. That was the, the, Hooters, the, that was the Hooters, Hooters commercials. The, the Hooters, Hooters coaches, commercials. <laughs> when, when I got the look from the dean, I knew it was over. You knew <laughs> it was the end, the end of it, right? Sammy Hayworth will punt the ball off following the safety, bringing the score to 7-2. to two. Seabree still leading Bartram Trail. That is, against Sammy Hayworth into punt. Okay. Fielded at the Bartram Trail 30. Nowhere to go. On the return is Bryce Walker. Again, this game could, have, could be going any way right now. Yeah, absolutely. And still can. And it's 7 to 2 in the top of the fourth. <laughs> yeah. I'll give you that one. <laughs> That's that's baseball. So that is a baseball. Okay. I, I understand. <laughs> all, all, I, this all I know good. about baseball is to say hum, babe, and spit your bug. That's, that's, that's it. it. You think you've been saying that since 19 forever. All right. <laughs> when you get something down, you just stay with it. <laughs> that's phenomenal. I often think of that phrase. Hum, barb, spit your glove. Here we go. We're going to see Gatewood again. Yes, we are. I really like him. And not that I don't like Jordan Smith, but I, this Gatewood kid is real impressive. Yeah, as a ninth grader, you got to like what he's doing. Under pressure. He's going to run this. He's going to roll to the left. Oh, freshman. Now, freshman. Okay. freshman. He's got to throw that one to Mama, doesn't he, Coach? He did. I think he had a receiver right away, but when he decided, I'm not going to throw that, then he's got to, you're right, throw it up in there in the stands. Yeah, yep. Rashad Live to Floyd. fight another day. Rashad Floyd was the first sand crab to meet him, and Rotavia Sanders finished him off. It'll bring up second down and long. Rashad Floyd showing up tonight for the sand crabs on defense, making some plays. From their 37-yard line, Magden in motion. He'll stop. Coach Allen's workhorse, David Coleman, on the carry for the Bears. He'll bring a third down. Well, not exactly what you'd like to have on third down. All right, they're going to have to snap the ball here. There's 32 seconds to go in the quarter when they mark it ready for play. So they will run this third down play here in the third quarter. Magnin in motion again. Smith has a receiver. Flag on the play. The pass is caught. Did our motion man turn up early? I don't know. I don't. Anthony Young on the reception. And every coach wants every blatant foul call, but my goodness. An eligible receiver downfield. I'm willing to bet that uh, Coach Sutherland's going to question that one as well. Yes, Coach Allen, I, we may need to send you with a portable mic down to interview the the Bear coach after the game. The see visiting what, coach. See what he see what he thinks about his night here in Daytona. Mm, he he's he's gotten an indoctrination into the A1 officiating. That's for sure. They've, they've gotten to know one another down there tonight. Do, I, do they dare throw stop and go? I don't see why not. It's worked twice. It has. Third and long for the Bears. Eight seconds Perfect. to go in the third quarter. Smith wind the clock. Center. They're not going to snap the ball. I don't know how the quarter, well, they are going to snap the ball. Smith under pressure. He eludes the first would-be tackle. Not going to be past the second one. Next. Ricky Altman in on the sack. 
And with that play, it will bring to a close the third quarter. Well, with see, your score, Seabreeze 7, Marshall Trail 2. Seabreeze averts a little bit of a potential disaster coming off the safety and uh, Bartram really doesn't even pick up any any field position for that. We'll see what happens in the third quarter. The change of the game, your hometown fan track seven, the Bears two. Please keep mouth over the Please do so at this time. Well, the third quarter took on a, uh, a regular field for us, uh, Coach Allen, there were only two possessions that whole quarter, although we're used to two possessions the entire half. Bartram running the ball a little bit there and, and having it possess it, that, that helped a little bit. Seabreeze was in and off the field, got the got the safety and had to give it back to him. So um, we'll see what Bartram's got in their kicking game here. And if Seabreeze tries to return the favor here by coming after this kick. You know, once you rough him one time, you, you kind of... Gun chai, is that the yeah, word you're looking for? Yeah, I think for? that's the word I'm looking for and, and looking to see what kind of configuration we've got. They're all there. I yeah, just don't know. Yeah. Oh, he may have gotten a little piece of that. Marjorie hey! Trail's punt will go out of bounds at the Seabreeze 43-yard line. It will be first and 10 Sand Crabs. Leading seven to two. Seabreeze is going through the post here on first down, Bill. They're going to throw the post route here and get, try to try to get a big score. Not a lot of down the field throwing of the football tonight. I understand that that's probably due to the lack of production um, to this point in the season. But I, knowing Coach Beach, I, I know he's he's itching to do it. Summers will be the tailback. Floyd, Muller, your quarterback. Floyd is in the slot to the wide side of the field. Summers on the carry. Uh-oh. He loses one tackler, comes oh, back near side. Got a few blocks. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Pushed out of bounds by Jake Marshall. That was the outside zone to the left. Reverse field of the running back and a nice block by the quarterback. You see the difference in the speed level when they reverse field like that. It, it, Bartram just seems, you know, quite slow to be able to, you know, reverse their field and, and, and run it down. Muller fakes the handoff. He's going to come near side, and he's going to be tripped up right away. There he is again, folks, Nick Martin. Nick's going to, he's going to sleep well tonight because he has been very active, and he has been hard to handle. They brought an A-gap blitz with him there. They kind of jammed it up inside there. Seabreeze did a pretty de decent job of, of, of taking care of it, but it was a quarterback run off the read, and, and there was just really nowhere to go. Mm. That Summers on the carry. And although he didn't make the tackle, Nick Martin had a lot to do with that. He sure again. did. He sure did. He allowed his buddy Hayden Good to jump in there and make another tackle. Hayden's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 9 or 10 for the night. Bartram Trail has just dominated the line of scrimmage here on defense. Absolutely. They've, they've shot the gaps when they needed to, and, and they've just controlled the line of scrimmage. They've been real solid. And both club, both ball clubs on defense, for that matter, have been have been solid. You know, in a seven-two game. They got him again, coach. That's unbelievable. It is really and, unbelievable. And I don't know if you could hear that or not, but defensively, a linebacker saying "go." Yep. They switch. They they shift, and Seabreeze jumps for a third time tonight. Crafty. We'll just we'll, we'll use that word, crafty. I'm wondering if the conversation is, are they being, are they being baited into into the jump by? You know how sometimes as a defensive lineman, if you go, wonder no more, simulate the snap. A1 officials like the steak sauce, buddy. Perfect. Getting <laughs> it <laughs> done. <laughs> but but that has been a call. Absolutely. I mean, you can't bark or say anything which. Shouldn't matter when you're on offense. 
No. You have the upper hand. Correct. <laughs> It'll be third and 15 for the Sand Crabs. Oh, ball. Get on it. Snap. Just get on it. Mishandled. Muller's going to fall on it at the 38-yard line. It's going to be fourth and forever for the Sand Crabs. Haywood will have to bail him out again here if he can do it. Had his last block, his last punt blocked. I, I think if I'm Bartram, I, I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot again. You know, let's get, let's keep him uncomfortable. Nineteen is clear sailing here if he wants it. Nice punt. Oh, absolutely. Gets off a great punt. Fielded at the Bartram Trail 25. That's Bowman. Uh -oh. He's going to come near side. He looks like if he gets unwound, he can run a little he bit. He does look like he's got. He's not a fast starter. Long looks strider. Like he gets it going. Yeah. He's going to get stroking. Bubba Ballish trips up Bolden. And it's a good thing he does because if he doesn't, Bolden's going to pick up a few more yards and maybe find the end zone. Seven to two, your score. Seabreeze leading Bartram Trail. Nine. 21 remaining in the game. Coach Bubba Balish has made a couple of big plays in the open field, a couple of tackles that could have been big plays, and, um, you know, credit to him and his open field tackling. I think the secondary from Seabreeze has done a really nice job of tackling here tonight. Agreed. Jordan Smith brings the Bears out, first and 10. Connor Roberts in motion. Smith looking Got him. Has a receiver Got him. wide open. Oh, my. Bryce Walker, he's at the 15, the 10, the 5. He's Touchdown. Touchdown. That little wheel route right there. Got a little Got rub on somebody, sure I up. think. And, again, we talked about it earlier. When you got those secondary guys looking in the backfield, and we just talked about that, you know, they're, they're at the line of scrimmage, and uh, they come up with a big play right there. We may have a chance to see it here on instant replay and take another look, but it looked like an in route by the wide receiver and then a wheel behind it by number 11. They're going to go for two here. What's the plan? It's an eight to seven. Up eight to seven. Up one. Uh, the old kick chart, I think, says go for two. I think so too, coach. Yes, sir. One of the hardest things to do at this point is to just get your defensive guys refocused. So many times they'll, they'll miss the call coming in right here because they've still got their daubers down. Surprisingly, they go with Gatewood at quarterback. He's going to run it. Nope, he's going to throw, throw the fade. fade. And he's got it. Oh, they're going to call offensive pass interference. R.J. Stokes on the coverage. A lot of hand fighting going on in that. The pass was intended for Dallas Geiger. Oh, 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 so that's the hand fighting, huh? That's a big play. Half the distance of the goal. Bartram Trail will get a second opportunity at a two-point conversion. Here I think you see if number two can go over the top and mm -hmm. just get Agreed. it in because he, he hits it hard and, and he runs with kind of a goal line mentality anyway. So I won't be surprised to see number two carry the ball. And I think you got to feel like Bartram Trail has kind of owned the lines of scrimmage tonight, you know, both offensively and defensively, if they can move Seabreeze off the spot a little bit here. Play action. There you go. Didn't get it in. Dude, didn't yeah. get up, did he? Nope. Oh, unless the second effort is. Nope. Not going to get it. Great job by the Seabreeze defense. Making themselves big. One of the guys in on the stop is John Scott. He's stopping the two-point conversion. That's a big stop. Absolutely. Oh, he got him on the sluggo, coach. He got he him did. on the sluggo. Sure it wasn't a wheel route. Yep. He started on that slant, turned the, it up. The double moves have been the, the, the death of Seabreeze there tonight with that. So with 9.08 to go in the fourth quarter, Bartram Trail now leads Seabreeze 8-7. to seven. Their scoring has been a safety and a long touchdown pass. Two-point conversion failed. Seabreeze defense coming up big. 8-7 to seven your score, 9-0-8 to go in the game. Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, and Rocky Yoko. 
do you go onside kick here? I say no. Okay. No, I, I'm saying, but do you? Uh, absolutely no. Absolutely no. <laughs> I'm with you on that all the way. You've you fought back in it. You were down the whole first half. You've got yourself back in it in the second half and taken the lead. Now let's put the pressure on them to make the plays and to, to drive the football, which they haven't proven that they can do here in the second half. Nice kick. It'll be fielded at the four-yard line. That's Sanders. That's a very He's got, a He's got one man to beat. Oh. And he gets stuck by the kicker. Yes, he did. That was good. Jake Marshall. Touchdown saving tackle. Great return by Rotavia Sanders. It'll be first and ten Seabreeze from their own 46-yard line. Looked like they had them pinned down where they wanted it to kick the ball, you know, kind of strategically, and uh, just brought it on out of there. They got some blocks and did a good job. Uh, now let's see what they can do with this good field position. They would have had better yardage if they would have just if they were just onside kick. That's true. <laughs> uh, Summers in the backfield with Muller. Muller under pressure. No contain. Left. He has nobody out there. Run down by Anthony DeLeo. It'll bring up second down for the Bears. The big three, Good, DeLeo, and Marshall, have had good ball games tonight for the for the Bears. That's for sure. They're, they're getting after people. They're being active, getting around the ball. A uh, little bit sketchy on that contain there, Coach. He, he got out of there pretty pretty easily. He, yes, he did. And that that three-man front, which they shift to the four, and we might see a shift right here before the snap. Mm -hmm. No, they're all going to be down. Summers on the carry. The bowl is going over the 50-yard line. To the Barber Trail, 48. You mix up that front like that, Coach. Sometimes your kids play better in the one that they play all the time, and you that change up, you know, right there. It just seems like that four-man front, it gets a little bit, there's some there's some holes, there's some there's yep. soft spots. And they're, they, I, like you said, they're probably very comfortable in that 3-3 three, three stack, Absolutely. knowing where their responsibilities are. And, uh, they, Roth, Hamilton, and Scotty check in to the game for the Sand Crabs. That indicates the big package. Yep. Now, we've had, we just had a, a, a snap to the side, and we've had a bad snap, and I just wonder if there might be something going on with the Seabreeze Center. It's just something we'll watch as we go through the final 804 here because they can ill afford a bad snap, you know, that hurt them on the last drive. Timeout called by Seabreeze High School. 8.04 to go in the contest. Seabreeze down now. 8-7 to seven to Bartram Trail. We'll be right back. Third down and five, Seabreeze. Summers takes the snap and he is smacked. By number 18, Tanner Murphy. Looks like he's going to have first down yard. It's going to be really close. I don't think we need to measure this. Let's give him a first down and keep playing. Nope. Uh, of course not. Left foot spot, short, dollar. Well, just to give you an opportunity to get one right tonight, Bill, I'll take that. Okay. So, Coach Gay, your call is first down? I'm calling short. Oh, short. Yes, sir. All right. I'm calling first down, Coach. Well. Just to be If I needed a car 50 cents, I think I'd ask Coach Allen for his 50 cents. Because <laughs> I think he's fixing to win it. And he's fixing to pay me a dollar. You're welcome. He's short. Oh, yeah. You know what? I got that dollar. Thank you. Keep that dollar. <laughs> Don't keep that one. <laughs> well, big down here in the fourth quarter. Okay, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a defensive guessing. shift. <laughs> or 
Oh. That's, that's been their best offense. We've come to the, <laughs> we've come to the time in the evening when we get punchy. <clears throat> Here we go. There's the shift. And they no stayed move. still. Oh, and what a what a nice Baraba block. Nice, nice move. He blocks up front. Takes it down to the 31 yard line. The Carson Trail. Summers, Summers has done a nice job in that set tonight of finding his way, just kind of being patient, let the blocking unfold. And it, it won't surprise me to see Summers in there for a, for a while now. Right, right, and just to stay with it, they've got something working. Marcus Bullard and Rashad Floyd are your receivers. Summers. That's Floyd in motion. Summers keeps the ball, runs left. He'll be stopped, but he'll be stopped after about an 11 yard game. First and 10 Seabreeze. We've got something going here. Seven minutes to go and counting in the game. Bartram Trail leading Seabreeze eight to seven. It's first and 10 Santa Crabs from the Bartram Trail 20. Floyd in motion, Summer. Oh, oh no sir. That's that penetration I've been yes, talking about. Yes, sir. They seem to get that on a pretty regular basis. Matt McDonald on the big stop for Bartram Trail. I would think that they have a chance to be in Haywood's range here as a field goal kicker at this point. Absolutely. Yeah, Sammy Absolutely. Can make that from there. And give him a chance to, again, be, be the MVP that we've been saying that he is tonight. And uh, I think Coach Beach would much rather have cross that alumni stripe with the ball. Summers is going to give the ball to Floyd this time. There's nobody there. And a blocker. He's going to be knocked out of bounds at the six-yard line. First-yard goal. Walter oh, oh, brought all the pressure behind the motion that time. There was nobody here. Of course. Officials timeout for water. 5.55 remaining in the contest. Seabreeze knocking on the door. Welcome back to Municipal Stadium, Larry Kelly Field, Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, and Rocky Yoakum. Bartram Trail leading Seabreeze 8-7. to seven. Seabreeze knocking on the door. Defensive shift up front. There's a handle. snap. Whistles abound. With, with eight minutes left, we, we made the point that, you know, that might be something to watch because we've had a couple of those situations tonight, and, and we ran into it again there. We've got some exchange issues. Is, is the regular center for Seabreeze still still playing here tonight? I didn't know if that big kid that hurt his knee might have been a center. That's a good question, Coach. I'm not sure. Number 53 is in its center. That's Carson Rodriguez. Clock continues to roll. Second and goal for the, the Sand Crabs. Counter. Floyd 
In oh, he came underneath at that time. Number six. Down to the ten yard line. Yeah, number six. Nice job there coming underneath that kick out block. He just fell back inside there. There's really three plays they've got out of this set. They've got the outside run play with motion. They've got the quarterback following that, and then the counter by the quarterback. Those are the three things we've seen. Correct. Seabreeze probably like to just let this clock continue to run. No more first downs. So we're a third and goal situation here, Coach Gagan. And in this set, they're probably going to run the ball. <laughs> I would say yes, but you never know. Floyd in motion, defensive shift up front. Floyd on the carry, takes the ball down to about the four yard line. It's gonna be fourth and goal. Clock's gonna run. Yep, and it's a, it's a tough angle for this field goal here. And down there on the four, kicking from the right hash mark. Sam Hayworth is coming in to attempt the field goal that would put Seabreeze up 10 to eight. The ball will be spotted. They're missing at somebody. 12. Missing a left guard or tackle. And they want to go ahead and take the delay of game here oh. if they have to. Don't rush it, boys. Kick is good. 3.36 remaining in the contest. Seabreeze is now up on Hartson Trail. 10 to 8. Following the Sam Hayward 22 yard field goal. That's a great point, though, Coach. You get in that situation. Hey, the worst thing that can happen, they back you up by, you know, and you just make the angle a little better. Makes really. the angle better. It doesn't hurt you. Don't, don't, don't make that kicker feel like he has to rush because he's got the most important job, and that's to get that thing through the uprights. We'd like to say thank you to our sponsor, MVP Courier. We make your life easy. That's MVP Courier. Guys, while we have a quick second, let's go ahead and talk about tomorrow. All right. American Heritage coming here, Municipal Stadium, to take on the number one ranked Mainland Buccaneers. That's a Ric Flair game. Woo! <laughs> he just let you. Well, I think we're all excited to see that. And. How, do, how does American Heritage work as far as classification? Are they the same class as Mainland? Or? They're in class 5A. Five, five, they, they're number 2 behind South Sumter, only by a couple points. Their coaching staff is NFL experience laden. It's going to be an interesting ball game. Tomorrow. It will be. Hayworth set to kick off from his 40-yard line. It's a high kick, but it's a little shorter than usual. It's going to be fielded at the one, bobbled, and then refielded, and then bobbled again at the six-yard line. Bryce Walker mishandled the kickoff. So, for all intents and purposes, Bartram Trail will look to end this game on their drive, either by field goal or touchdown. 3.30 to go in the game. They're down 10 to eight. Seabreeze defense needs to come up just as big now as they did on Bartram Trail's two point conversion. Absolutely. Your quarterback for this potential game winning drive is going to be Jordan Smith, the sophomore. I think they feel like he gives them the better opportunity to throw the football. Smith looking, has a receiver caught at the 20 yard line. Anthony Young on the reception. The clock continues to roll with 320 after they move the chains. It'll be 323 and counting. Defensive change for the Sand Crabs. First to ten, Bartram Trail. Roberts in motion. Takes one. He's, he's, still, he's still moving. Still going. Nine yards on the carry. He's going to bring up a second down. I still believe Bartram Trail is going to have to throw the football to get it down here within field goal range. I don't think they can run it down there. I agree, Coach. Hunter Hartsfield's helmet came off again, so he'll take another play off. It'll be second down and one, 240 and counting.
Smith under pressure, eludes pressure. Another flag. Takes up a few yards on the play. He's going to have enough for a first down, but it's a flag on the play. Dunnigan on the stop for Seabreeze. Guys on the line, or too many guys. It has the formation look. You can't have waving too it many. off. There we go. I was going to say too many guys in the back. Sorry, coach. I okay. get you know when, when Madden starts talking, I get nervous. I understand you get mesmerized. <laughs> and it, it's easy to do. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Chains will move first and ten for Bartram Trail from their 32-yard line. 2:30 and. <laughs> Counting. Smith looking deep. Has a receiver. Got him. Pass interference. No. He's just going to run nice. yeah. And now a flag is going to be called. Or thrown rather. Look, Connor Coach, Roberts I'm gonna, on the reception. I'm going to tell you both right now that if this is called as an offensive pass interference, Coach Sutherland is going to be have his Christian values tested because that was a defensive interference for absolute certain, and the kid makes a great play to come back and find the ball. I'm sure if we look at the replay ball, Coach. Did I'm right again? Yep. -er. Thank you. We're going to move the chains. March and trail. On the move. Pass interference is called against Seabreeze. That penalty will be declined. First and 10, Seabreeze High School from the Bartram Trail, excuse me, from the Seabreeze 34-yard line. Here's where your lack of success throughout the season, kind of you're worried about your kids just, you know, thinking that they can and believing that they're going to when things start going bad. And Clock starts at 2.13. Coleman on the carry. Is this a situation where it's let's score and play defense, or do you not want to score too early? I don't think they're going to have that. I don't think they have that enough time to make that a, an issue. I think that with 157 and, and, and rolling here, they're going to have to make a decision. Yeah, if they can score, they can yes, score sir. on this play. Yes, yes sir. They don't want to care about that. And if it was 46-37 like last year or whatever it might be, but not right. this year. Bartram Trail down to 10 to 8. They dial up that sluggo again. They can hit the handoff to Coleman. And, you know, Jalen, I think you said you knew how long their longest field goal was this year. They kicked a 39 yarder, is the longest they've kicked, but I don't know what his potential is, but that's the longest that they've made. So they're on the border of that right now. Obviously hoping to keep the ball in between the hashes. No kick is better than a straight on kick. Agreed. One minute to go in the contest. Third down for Barton Trail. Holman almost mishandled oh the ball. Has it around his back. Keeps oh it on the tip. Takes the ball down to the Seabreeze. Maybe the seven yard longest, line. longest run of the night perhaps. It at the be. most inopportune time for the Crabs. And definitely the most interesting. Yeah, because it looked like that ball could be squirting around in the backfield there and initially. So, it'll be first and goal. Did he go out of trail. bounds over there, Bill? Could you tell? Was he out of bounds to stop? I, stopped. I thought he it, was. It, they... it stopped. It's going to wind right now. Okay, so he wasn't out of bounds. He was no. not, so okay. it's winding. we got a hurt Seabreeze player trying to limp to off. Smith gives the ball to Coleman. Coleman oh, man. Dodges his way down. Inside the five-yard line to the three of Seabreeze. 35 seconds to go and counting. Nobody's in a hurry at this point. I think they, they might need to get in a little bit more of a hurry. This is this is 23 seconds and it's rolling. Second and goal. 20 seconds to go in the game. Archer Trail down two points. 15 seconds to go. Coleman on the carry. Far side, touchdown. Wow. Touchdown, Parker Trail. With nine, with nine seconds. seconds to go. Wow. Now you got to give Bartram Trail credit. You know, yes, they've come in do. here in the in the second half and they've basically scored 14, you know, and with a with a goose egg in that first half, and they they found some things and 
they were probably a little more patient than we thought they'd be, but they did have the one long pass yeah, in there. The, one, the we, one long one, but they, they've done it on the ground they for have. the most part. They kept that clock rolling. Seabreeze is going to have to see if they can get Charles Nelson back down here for the kickoff return. No doubt. I wouldn't give him an opportunity to return that, Coach. He'd be one of those big guys in one of those middle rows fielding it off the ground. Tyler Gallitz into point into a tempo point after. The kick is up, the kick is good. Four. With nine seconds to go. Martin Trail now leads Seabreeze by a score of 15 to 10. Big old right tackle got a block. Yep, sure then. did. They brought the inside backer, so there was no help kind of coming over top. He, you know, it's not far to go there. Middle of the field, three or four yard gain. You're not thinking much of it, but when you're on the three or four for the ball game. One would assume that Tyler Gallich is just going to squib the ball down the field. Nine seconds to go. His team up by five whole points. That's exactly what I would be doing right here. There would be no chance I would give anybody with a single digit a chance to run with this football. It's been everything's advertised, Bill. And just the life just sucked out of the entire Seabury sideline. It's unbelievable. It's on the ground. Oh. All right. So the Pooch oh, we got a flag oh. now. Maybe it's the excessive way, celebration. Well, uh, the way the Bears are clapping their hands, they think it might be against Seabreeze. And at this point, I don't think that there's a whole lot of chance for a big play here. You never know, but uh, they're staring down the Seabreeze. You know, when, a, when you have a good officiating crew, you hardly know they're there. Well, I've been very aware of this crew tonight. I have too. Enough said. No, exactly. Dead ball, personal foul, call against Seabreeze. That's what they didn't need. We'll see what the victory formation is for the defense of the Bears here. They're Shift. Gonna <laughs> they're going to line up. They're going to line up three and shift them. If that happens, everyone watching this will hear my headset just fall down. I will walk out of here. There's no way three guys will shift, and Seabreeze jumps off. I'd go cover ten here. Well. Somebody ought to go over there on the right side and play deep corner. They're going to play gonna halves. Play halves yeah. with it, yep. I like the decision to get up on the outside receivers here. You've just got to watch that number three down the middle. He was, he was there, you know, he saw it the whole way. He was there waiting on it. Did they give him the pick? If he caught that, he made a heck of a catch, guys. Yeah, it's double zero. It's over. It is over. Sandcrabs fall to one and four. Well, I tell you what, crushing loss for the crabs for sure. It is. Sure is. They can only look up and say we're still second in our district. Our playoff hopes are still alive. And congratulations to Coach Sutherland getting his hundredth win here tonight. Yep. In Daytona. Your final score, 15 to 10, Bartram Trail over Seabreeze. As the players shake hands, we'll take a few seconds to ourselves. We'll be right back.
<laughs> Welcome back to Municipal Stadium and Larry Kelly Field. Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, and Rocky Yoakum. We're tonight, Barton Trail was victorious 15-10 to 10 over the Seabreeze Sandcrabs. Coach Allen, last year's game was 49-36. to 36. This year, obviously, not quite as high of a contest, but it was basically a double victory for Bartram Trail to come in. They fought hard to earn the victory and also another milestone for the team. Yeah, they get some redemption from, from last year. They, they've got a little better start than they had last year, and they had to fight back from it. You know, their schedule's been tough. Um, you know, good. Murphy, DeLeo, Marshall stood up on defense tonight, and they did what they had to do offensively in the second half, and hats off to their coaching staff. And uh, that's how uh, you get 100 wins. You know, you get that by, by knowing how to win football games, and they did it when they needed to do. And, you know, again, hats off to Coach Sutherland with this 100th win. That's impressive. He's an impressive man. It couldn't happen to a better guy. And, uh, you know, the Bartram Trail football team's got, they've got some more victories out there, I believe, for them. Coach Oakham, this game, as we've said before, could have gone either way. It could have been a lopsided game or it could have been just as close with a, with many more points scored by both by both schools. Defensively, Seabreeze came up big. Offensively, not as much firepower. I, I thought their secondary tackled awfully well tonight. They had, uh, I believe, three pass interference penalties that really did hurt them, uh, uh, that let the uh, Barkham Trail team keep their drives alive um, you know they're they're they've got to be disappointed in this they had a chance to to get two wins back to back now and uh, they don't have that uh, they're open next week and then they face the coco tigers here for homecoming in two weeks so they've got got a little time to prepare and and shake some of that stuff off but once again with the with the playoff situation like it is uh, they have they have something to continue to fight for and work for and i'm sure that uh, Everybody will try to get better once again. We're blessed that no one was seriously injured here tonight, and it was a it was a good football game. Boys, tomorrow night we got ourselves a good one. American Heritage traveling to face the undefeated and number one ranked Mainland Buccaneers. Your thoughts on that game, quickly, Coach Allen? Keith Jackson would say we got a Donnie Brook in Daytona. I like to I like to see it. I know we've been excited about it, looking forward to it on the schedule, and uh, I'm certain that American Heritage will not be intimidated with the schedule that they have played. Dwyer, St. Thomas Aquinas, and playing out of South Florida, they're they're not going to be intimidated by Mainland. However, you do not have to be afraid to be beaten. So uh, Mainland's got a good football team, and I look for just I'm I'm just so excited about it. I'm looking forward to it. Are you just going to stay the night and wait? Not that excited. Okay, Coach Oakham. I have to work tomorrow, so <laughs> I, I will be going home tonight, but I will be here early. I think there will be a lot of electricity in the air, some Division One football players on both teams, and uh, I would encourage anybody to pick up the phone and call a friend and tell them to watch this uh, on Double D Entertainment here because I, I think it's a great opportunity to not only just hear the football game but to be able to see it as well. So I will see everybody here again tomorrow night. We are all definitely looking forward to tomorrow night. Thank you again to our sponsor, MVP Courier. We make your life easy. For Charlie Williams, cameraman Arden Gregory, owner of Double D Productions, Dan Descoli, Steve Allen, Rocky Yoakum, I'm Billy Gahagan. Bartram Trail 15, Seabreeze 10. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Ball is down by RJ Stokes. Bartram Trail will have their first possession of the second half from their 19-yard line. Seven to nothing your score. Seabreeze leading Bartram Trail. 8.45 to go in the third quarter. Billy Gahagan, Steve Allen, Rocky Open. I'm glad to be back. Glad to be anywhere. <laughs> Gatewood back under center for the Bears. My uh -oh. correction, that's uh -oh. Jordan Smith. Coleman on the carry. Big yards for the Bears. First and 10 for the Bears after a big carry from their 39 yard line.
Hey, Daryl's got back to a little bit of double wing here, double slot. You know, we're going to get option out of this. Okay. Hand off once again to Coleman. It's interesting as, as we as coaches, we all, we, all, we all evolve, or the good ones evolve, but you still have what your, your root basic, you know. What you cut your teeth on. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. That's right. And you just kind of try to find new ways to do some of the same things, and it looks like that's what Bartram Trail's got going here. Oh, they're going to get another nine. call here. Yep. That's not going to make your cousin very happy. I would look for a substitution in the defensive line. Uh, Coach Kramer is talking to one of his D linemen about something. Yes, he is. He's having a serious conversation. Five yards on that penalty. I don't think he's asking him what happened in second period today, Coach. No. From the looks of that. Second and five, Bartram Trail. Magden in motion. Smith's going to keep the ball. You know they've got a good they've got a good call on right there defensively. Yes, they do. And they the kid do. just makes a play. You know, gives him a little fake on it. I mean, much where this thing stopped his little right. second effort. If he goes down there, I think that he's okay. But when he tried to squirm out, they, this is a tough third down situation here. Now Sylvester is a converted defensive back. He's only a junior. Obviously, he didn't get many carries last year. At some point, somebody's got to teach him enough's enough. Go down. So you don't lose too many yards. Right, right. You just can't afford this, this kind of loss here. We're third and, as my cousin would say, a bus ride. Correct. From the Bartram Trail, 44-yard line. Muller looking downfield. He's under pressure. He'll elude the pressure. Roll to his right. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what. He is taking it. we got another crab. 64 is down on the field. We've got the quarterback taking a big blow here. Kevin Hosek shaking up on the play for the Sand Crabs. And, and to be quite honest with you guys, they were small going in. Yeah. Not just in size, but in numbers. Thin and thin. Yeah, they, they don't need to lose anybody up front. In fact, they're playing without their most experienced offensive lineman. Uh, looking, looking, looking. Uh, who has, he has an act, he's actually out with a concussion. And he's not on the roster. He must have been replaced by another another player, but I don't see his name on here. So down in numbers and in size, and we need to hope that Kevin Hosek is okay and come back. I, I think I, I, I just from the looks of it, he is pretty ginger on an ankle or on a knee here. He's looks like he's got his left knee wrapped up, uh -huh. and, and then that's the one he's sort of favoring at this point. The name I was looking for was Dan Sutton. Dan Sutton is the offensive lineman for CBS. Out with the Not concussion. Finished. Out with the concussion. In fact, he's walking in the white jersey with Coach Hillman uh, just off to our right. So it'll be fourth down for the Sand Crabs. Sammy Hayworth in to do what he does best. A.J. Bolden back deep to receive for the Bears. He'll be standing at his 10-yard line. Again, an attempted... Coffin corner kick. Touched somebody. It sure did. The receiver should recover it. They don't look too interested in doing it, so. Must have looked a lot different to them down on the field than it did to us because it looked like something that might need to be, you know, chased after pretty quick. It sure did. He can't. Yep. The ball carrier is too far gone to be involved right. as a pitch man. And the pitch is, somebody in the secondary has got their eyes on the pitch. I so. believe so. Chase Hamilton on the stop for the Sand Crabs, who will have a measurement. It's one of those deals in, uh, in option football. You know, you got those. You're going to have to get, like you said, help out of the secondary. Those corners start getting their eyes back in the backfield, and then you, you're getting some of those stop and go opportunities. You know, you're, you're playing close. You're, you know, I always, I always hated having our secondary guys being real involved with backfield action um, because their first job is to take care of this back here. And, uh, you can get formationed into some of those situations. Oh, you sure can. And, uh, you know, when we played option teams, lots of times we practiced without the ball. Just Absolutely. Kids, just so that you yeah. didn't have kids watch because your scout team can't execute like the your opponent's going to. So if you take the ball out of it, you can at least see if people have the right assignment. 
when I was a young coach, I had an old coach tell me, Coach, that um, you always need to be defensively. You always need to be triple solid. You Without always need to be triple solid. If you're triple yeah. solid, you got a chance. That's when, when growing up in Oklahoma and watching the wishbone teams play or watching Oklahoma run the wishbone anyway, that was, when anybody came and said, I want to do this on defense, I would always say, well, how are we going to defend the option? If, you, yep. if we're solid there, then I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Third down and that much for the Bears from their 49-yard line. Magnet in motion. Seabree's not sure what they want to do right there. Coleman. <clears throat> Second effort. So, they have gotten third effort. Definitely wow. moves down after wow. about three or four Good run. I lost the ball I there did in that too. I didn't think he made it, and then he popped out and squirmed ahead and made the first down. What a tough run. It actually looked like they were almost scrambling for the ball. It, it, it had that look to it from up here. We're, we're a ways away from the action. Jordan Smith and the Bears, first and 10 from the 50-yard line. Seabree showing blitz. Mm. Smith keeps the ball. Mm. Yeah. 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 Lost to live. Field. Yep. And high school football, if your helmet comes off, do you have to leave for a play? Yes, yes so. you do. Hunter Hartsfield. That's caught by Rashad Floyd. First down. I just think that they've got to get the ball in his hands a little bit more. I would agree with you. Just seems that he's had a, and it's a combination of the quarterback play as well, but it seems that he's had a, a, a tough transition going from being, you know, Robin to being Batman. You know, last year he didn't have to carry the load. This year he's got to be the guy. Muller looking deep down the field, has a wide open receiver. Oh. Great throw and catch, but I'll tell you what, Jordan Helm. Helm. Collision. Jordan Helm, and this will be the initial stop. Anthony Blake on the reception for the St. Crabs. He felt it too. It was a great catch and great throw, but he he got he got a pretty good blow at the end of that. Seabreeze off to a great start here in the second half. First and ten crabs from the Bartram Trail 43. Muller throwing the screen. That's Sylvester. He's got a blocker out in front of him. He's going to take a few bears with him. And he will pick up the first down. It'll be first and 10 Seabreeze at the Bartram Trail 30-yard line. Coach, it looks like they inverted that, that little tunnel screen and went the other way with it, it, huh? It was a little different design yeah. than I'm used to seeing there, the back coming out of the backfield, I guess, catching that thing. Sylvester will stay in the backfield with Muller. Three receivers near side. Speed option. Nope. Muller looks to his left, pass. Lateral. Yep, yep, yep. Pass is intended for number 20, Brett Cormier. Cormier, coincidentally, is one of about five call-ups. The uh, JV game Wednesday against Mainland High School was called off due to inclement weather, which I don't understand. <laughs> and uh, Cormier is a call-up. Sylvester doing yeah, this is not going to be trying good. to do his best Houdini. That's not going to happen. Well, I'll tell you what. It's hard to tell where his forward progress might have ended there. I think it's going to be pretty much you know, just it's everything that we talked about before the game. And, and, and here we are. It's definitely still out there for anybody to take. And, of course, we, we would be remiss if we didn't mention the kicking of Sammy Hayworth from Seabreeze High School. I think he has really been the thing that's kept the Bears at bay. He has turned the field around two or three times here tonight. Uh, had one kick off into the end zone. So we are getting ready to tee it up here to start the second half. Sand Crabs will receive. Back deep to receive for Seabreeze will be Javier Sylvester, Latavia Sanders. And have to get a read on the kicker for Barton Trail because it'll be the first time we've seen 
their kicker tonight. And I don't believe we've seen Javier in the backfield yet for the for the, for the Crabs. Summers has gotten most of those reps. He's Done a good job. Him, and, but we, well, Sylvester is the one who scored the touchdown. Right. He was on the speed sweep. But we don't see him. We, we've not, not seen much. him as the as the feature back, which we we saw a couple of weeks ago, and he did a nice job. I think he might be more suited to do what they're doing with him tonight. Second half is underway. That's fielded by Sanders. Coming near side, and he's going to be tripped up at about the 22-yard line. First and 10, Seabreeze from their 22-yard line, 11-53, remaining in the third quarter. Great job by David Kaplan there. He ran that down from the middle of the field. Looked like they might have a little something early on. It's hard to get that ball all the way from one side outside the numbers to the other side of the field. I, I was thinking the same thing. I like those guys to go straight up the middle with it. No. Number six for the Crabs last year might have been able to get that done, Charles Nelson. Muller comes out. He and Sylvester set up shop in the backfield for Seabreeze. Sylvester on the carry. Starts out. Mm. Starts out as if it's going to be a big run. Four or five Bears there in on the stop. Well, we Looking called for him. Leo and Marshall. We called for him and we got him, Bill. And, uh, <laughs> you know, one of the things we noticed about him and any small back, you know, you're not going to get a lot of yards after contact because um, he's not the biggest fellow, but he runs it hard. But if he gets to that second level, I'm going to put my money on, <laughs> on uh, Javier. With the, yes, against this group because I'm sure that he runs as well as anybody that's wearing white tonight. Muller's pass. Great catch. 